forces by not addressing this problem in this bill, and I ask everyone to consider this. This is a critical, critical issue, given little attention except by McCain, uh, Mr. McCain and uh, Mr. Uh, Smith. I, I ask that you do review that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Utah. Continue reserve. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentleman from Florida. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I uh, uh, am pleased to yield to my good friend from Ohio, Mr. Kucinich, two minutes. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, thank you. This bill authorizes permanent warfare anywhere in the world. It gives the President unchecked power to pursue war. It diminishes the role of this Congress. The Founders saw Article I, Section 8 of the Constitution, which places in the hands of Congress the war power as essential to a check and balance against the executive abuse of power. This legislation diminishes Congress's role in that regard. This legislation authorizes the military to indefinitely detain individuals without charge or trial, including the detention of U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. In short, what this bill does is it takes a wrecking ball to the United States Constitution and gives enormous power to the government or the state. I want friends on both sides of the aisle to understand this. We're giving the state more power over individuals with this bill. It's the wrong direction. Our children deserve a, a world without end, not a war without end. Our children deserve a world where they know that while their government will protect them, that it's not going to rule over them by invading their very thoughts and going as the Patriot Act does into their bedrooms or into, uh, into, excuse me, into their uh, banking records or into their educational records. We've got to keep the government out of people's lives, stop the government from getting more into war, which gives the government more control over people. This is a time we take a stand for the Constitution and a stand for a government which is smaller when it comes on matters of war. Thank you, and I uh, reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Utah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I wish to yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. In the uh, year we have been here discussing these things, we have talked a lot about budget problems that we have in this country. It's my contention that our budget is not just that we have been spending too much, but we have been spending on too much. One of the things, though, that we should be spending is, of course, military issues. Article 1 of the Constitution clearly states that the defense of the